In this video, we're gonna take a look at the cooking equipment that we take on our vehicle expeditions. So when it comes to actually boiling water and cooking food, there are various options that we've used over the years. Uh, for sheer simplicity, one of my favorites is the good old transient. I've, I've had this since I was a, a young teenager. Uh, I won't tell you how long ago that was, but it has no working parts at all. It's simply a small bowl. It takes methylated spirits. You pour that into the middle and it's got like a double walled system. So there's a, a double wall between the inner and the outer and there's like a wick. And I don't know if you can see it, but a series of holes there. So the methylated spirits had already disappeared and soaked up within the wick. And then we like using these um, turbo flames. Um, very good bit of kit. Um, and you simply light it. So that's now lit. And after a while, the flame will start to build up and you'll get a ring of um, blue flame there. So it comes with various attachments. That's kind of like a windshield. I don't know, you probably can't even see the flame, but there's a, you might be able to see, there's a bit of a flame already. And then that'll be in the middle and then it will work its way into the ring. And a series of pots of different sizes that go in. It even comes with a little kettle. Um, you can use that as a lid or a frying pan. And rather than having a handle on each one, you simply use that. So for sheer simplicity, this is brilliant. Not very controllable though. Um, what you'll get is, if I can find it, is this other little kind of cap with a sliding uh, lid to it. And the idea is that you place it over slightly to one side so that you, you're restricting the amount of flame. It's, it's all right, a bit fiddly to use, trying to actually adjust it because you've got to take the pot off and all the rest of it. But for making sure that you've got something that's actually gonna work every single time, it's because there are no working parts, it can't go wrong, um, simple as that. And to put it out, you either simply stick this or sometimes you stick, stick the lid back on and that'll just put the flame out. Moving on to petrol stoves, one of the best ones has to be the Coleman. Uh, this is the peak one, little uh, petrol stove. Now they do a two burner version as well, very similar to kind of this kind of size here. They've been around probably since the 1950s, 1960s. I was issued this when I was in the army. It was a standard bit of kit. I was part of an Arctic warfare unit. So um, every time we went to Norway and exercise, this was what we were issued. And I've had that ever since. It's very, very simple. Um, the fuel is placed into this bowl at the bottom through this little um, cap here. You then pressurize it by just undoing that a turn and then pump it up, get some pressure in there. And then you release the fuel and light it. Now it's just pressurized fuel at the moment. So once there's a flame, then if you can see, but this tube here will vaporize the fuel coming out and turning it into a gas. And then that gas then comes out as a blue flame. So you make sure both the filler cap and the priming pump or the pressure pump are both secure. And this is off. Um, open it up a little bit. You can just hear that, get your flame ready. There you go. Right, so you'll get a bit of flame for a while. And what's happening is the heat now from this kind of rough sooty flame will pressurize that 
tube there. And as it gets hotter, it will eventually, this flame will calm down and you end up with a nice blue flame. But this is a really old bit of kit. Um, really have to service it. Now, the fuel we're using here is uh, a Coleman white fuel, which is basically like a pure petrol. Um, it stops it sooting up. So every now and then you would actually want to carry Coleman fuel and just blast it through to try and sort of clean it all out. Um, they say it's multi-fuel, but really it's just kind of petrol. Um, I can't remember if I've ever tried to um, use diesel or meths or white spirit. Um, could give it, if you're in a, you know, if you had nothing else, then I would give it a go. But as long as you've got the cleaning kit to be able to use the little wire to sort of de-coke that little tube there. But now you can see, hopefully, you've got a nice, strong, blue, gas-like flame. So if you're heading somewhere remote and you're unable to buy gas bottles, um, then really this would be the one. If you're on your own, a single burner would be fine. If there's two of you and you want to have, you know, rice and a, and a sort of meat dish or a vegetable dish or something and you want two burners on the go, then get the bigger, the bigger version, the, the, the twin burner. But probably one of the best, simplest, most reliable bits of kit um, you're ever going to get. So that's the one I would highly recommend is the Coleman um, Peak One stove. Another stove that's very popular with mountaineers, climbers, hikers, uh, and all the rest of it uh, is the MSR stove. And this one, I believe, is the XGK model. So it works on the same principle as the Coleman stove in that you have a fuel container, you have a pressurizing system um, in the form of a pump, and then this sort of uh, heat unit here that then vaporizes the fuel. Um, but for some reason though, whereas I believe the Coleman was probably made in the 1950s, this was made or designed 10 years ago, um, they've managed to put in extra complexity into it and the reliability is nowhere near as good. One of the issues for that is the fact they've gone plastic. So this is the, the pump unit here. Uh, this is the, the sort of the regulator, the on off valve there. Uh, fuel comes in, air goes back in. The one good thing though is rather than with the Coleman whereby you have to carry fuel in a container and then you transfer it into yet another container uh, in the case of the Coleman, the fuel container that you're carrying your fuel in is actually the pressurized bottle. So you don't have, you're not doubling up on, on um, fuel containers. So that's probably why climbers like this because they've got to carry this thing on their back and it's just one less lump of metal they have to carry. So the way it works, same again, I've got the Coleman white fuel in here. Um, although it's supposed to be a multi-fuel stove, it does not work as well as the Coleman does on bad fuel, on petrol. Um, like I say, I don't know if you can ever get diesel to work on it, um, but it comes with quite a comprehensive cleaning kit and spares kit. They're obviously expecting trouble from it. So you take this sort of pump unit and you kind of contort it into uh, the bottle and do it up. And it has to be an MSR bottle because obviously you're putting, putting it under pressure. So make sure that's done up and make sure that tap is off. You then take your stove element with its very neat kind of folding feet. And obviously you can see I've run it a bit, so I've got some fuel in there. Um, and then you've got to make sure you get it around the right way. You place that there, that's uh, the fuel line, into that hole there. So, oh, make sure that goes around the right way. So that goes in there. And then this little clip comes around and engages in that groove there. So that's how you set it up, obviously, with the feet out. So once you've assembled it, um, you take the pump and you pressurize the whole bottle. 
and this is where the reliability is not going to be as good as the Coleman. When you look at the Coleman here, uh, metal priming pump, metal filler, metal control valve. Now I've got a feeling even the earlier ones didn't have this plastic uh, control valve here on off tap. Everything is, is metal, that's going to work. This is a lot more plastic. Uh, yes, great for lightweight, great if you're carrying it on your back, not good for making sure that it survives and it certainly won't work in the cold. Um, anything getting close towards minus 40, that's just going to shear. Um, plastics behave in a very strange way when you get to minus 40 and below. Um, the same as bungees will just stretch and stay there. Uh, drive belts on engines will also fail quite dramatically when they get cold. So you pump it up, you dribble a little bit of fuel out with the uh, turning the tap on and I can see some coming out in the bottom there. You take your match and you light it. Now it's the same principle this is pressurized, but it's just pressurized liquid, so it'll just come out under pressure. You want to turn it into a gas. So the flame is now heating up this tube here. Okay, so that curling tube there, that's being heated. And so the liquid coming down the pipe will be vaporized in that tube. So when it comes round, it's now coming out as a gas, not as a liquid. So once you've heated it up for a little bit, you can then reopen the tap. And already, hopefully you can hear that. It's got quite a roar to it. Very powerful. Very powerful indeed. And then you simply stick your pan on top um, but like I say it only really likes uh, the good fuel the Coleman white fuel plastics going anywhere cold forget it um, but just for sheer reliability it's going to be near as damn it it'll probably be 95% as effective as this thing um, but probably many many times more reliable A very popular bit of kit is the jet boil. Uh, very efficient. It's got like the little sort of uh, heat exchange kind of fins here that direct the heat up into the, the boiling vessel as opposed to the wind allowing the flame to blow sideways. However though, um, these little gas bottles here, very small, don't last very long and you're unlikely to really find them outside of camping shops in Western Europe. The other problem is as you can see hopefully inside it's not actually that big maybe I don't know say a pint or so so apart from making a cup of tea or coffee in the morning that's about all its use you're hardly gonna cook a chicken casserole in that thing but it's a great bit of kit but only really for making a cup of tea and probably only making one cup of tea so if there's more than one of you you're gonna need another cooker of some description in order to cook your evening meal and so therefore you're just carrying this thing around just to make a cup of tea where another one would be just of use. So good, we have taken them on trips, uh, to be quite honest, rarely bothered with them though. So and they are quite expensive. So if, it, if you're going for the, the one person, just make a cup of tea uh, stove, then I would go with the little small Coleman. Um, you'll be able to get fuel anywhere you go, unlike these little gas bottles here. If there's more than one of you, I would recommend just getting a big double burner gas stove like this. This is the most common thing that we've used. Uh, two big nice burners, very clean, very efficient, doesn't need servicing. This one comes with a little sort of toaster attachment. And then what we do is we fit these quick release little... Um, connectors here and so I haven't got it fitted on this one at the moment but you'd have the regulator already mounted on here at the end of the hose would be the female version so you just turn the gas off disconnect 
um, from that. And that's, that's it. So that's probably the great bit of kit. Propane will burn um, or will, will operate better in colder temperatures than butane, but it doesn't burn as hot. Um, this is a 3.9 kilogram. Unless you're going away for an extended period, then that should last you an awful long time. They are fairly readily available, but when you get to more remote parts of Africa, places like that, the odds are they'll have a different gas bottle with different adapters. So you might just have to completely swap this out, but as long as you can attach your hose or maybe re refit the, the connector uh, to, the, to the new hose and regulator, then you're still good to go. And when I used to work in Africa for a company called Dragoman Overland, uh, we just ran gas uh, and we had no problem at all. I think there were occasions where we had to swap over different styles of bottles and different regulators, but really that was the main thing. But for really remote, go petrol, petrol's basically everywhere, and Coleman, that's the one you want, either the single burner or the twin burner. So when it comes to actually cooking your food in something, what we tend to use for multi-person teams is um, these seven to eight person non-stick cook sets from a company called Highlander. Um, very cheap, very simple. What it is, it's just a whole series of sort of stackable um, pots. I think we've got one, two, three, four pots in here, each with their own different lids. And then um, a big one, uh, like a frying pan, but also can act as a lid for uh, the biggest one if needs be. So yeah, great, cheap, simple, non-stick. I would highly recommend uh, using that. As for something to eat out of, oh, we've tried plates and bowls and all the rest of it, but we always come back to mess tins. Now these are the, the kind of type uh, that you'd be issued in the military. This is certainly what I was issued. Um, cheap, flimsy, it burnt a lot, stuff got stuck on it, the handles were all wobbly. Um, you can still get these, but the ones I would recommend, and I've got a feeling these came from Van Gogh, um, non-stick with a nice locking uh, handle. Um, we've just found that these are absolutely brilliant um, wherever we go. And you can either use your, your spoon or there's different kind of uh, sets, but obviously uh, being non-stick, always go plastic. Uh, 